Hey everybody, this is Paul Gordon of State of Wake. I know you guys are all on pins and needles wondering whether or not the FBI, headed by Attorney General Loretta Lynch, is going to indict Hillary Clinton for what's called Servergate. Well, before we get into Servergate, we want to play you this uh, little clip here, which should help you... Well, it's going to help you understand the point that I'm going to make at the end. An impromptu meeting between Attorney General Loretta Lynch and former President Bill Clinton is raising questions of impropriety amid the ongoing FBI criminal probe into Hillary Clinton's email server and handling of classified information. Joining us now to discuss is WSJ reporter Devlin Barrett. Devlin, thanks so much for being with us. According to the Attorney General, the meeting was unscheduled. They just happened to be at the same airport at the same time. What does she say they discussed? Well, she says Bill Clinton came onto his uh, her airplane uh, in Phoenix Tuesday and says they talked for about a half hour about grandkids, about golf. They even talked about Brexit. She says they did not talk about the email investigation or any other issues before the department. But a lot of folks think it was inappropriate for, especially Republicans, frankly, think it was inappropriate for the attorney general and Bill Clinton to be having this private meeting uh, in a plane. Now, as I'm bringing this to you, this is July 5th. This is Tuesday, July 5th. This incident happened less than seven days ago, last Wednesday, and this was being reported on the morning of uh, the Thursday previous to this date. Now, it's very important that you make note of this. It's going to be relevant to the point that I'm going to make ahead. And now, the impartial and apolitical FBI director, James Comey, gives you his recommendation. Although there is evidence of potential violations of the statutes regarding the handling of classified information, our judgment is that no reasonable prosecutor would bring such a case. Prosecutors necessarily weigh a number of factors before deciding whether to bring charges. There are obvious considerations like the strength of the evidence, especially regarding intent. Responsible decisions also consider the context of a person's actions and how similar situations have been handled in the past. In looking back at our investigations into the mishandling or removal of classified information, we cannot find a case that would support bringing criminal charges on these facts. All the cases prosecuted involved some combination of clearly intentional and willful mishandling of classified information or vast quantities of information exposed in such a way as to support an inference of intentional misconduct or indications of disloyalty to the United States or efforts to obstruct justice. We do not see those things here. To be clear, this is not to suggest that in similar circumstances, a person who engaged in this activity would face no consequences. To the contrary, those individuals are often subject to security or administrative sanctions, but that's not what we're deciding now. As a result, although the Department of Justice makes final decisions on matters like this, we are expressing to justice our view that no charges are appropriate in this case. I'm not sure that anyone is surprised at uh, the results here, other than perhaps Andrew Napolitano, who was pretty sure she was going to be indicted, and the, the reams and reams and reams of hopeful posts by all types of uh, uh, right-leaning blogs and news sites that were, were, were swearing... Uh, uh, swearing with all that they were worth that uh, Hillary Clinton was going to be indicted any moment now. But before I get to the meat of what I have to say, I want to go back over one point that he uh, laid out in his fine presentation. I know there will be intense public debate in the wake of this recommendation, as there was throughout the investigation. What I can assure the American people is that this investigation was done honestly, competently, and independently. No outside influence of any kind was brought to bear. 
An impromptu meeting between Attorney General Loretta Lynch and former President Bill Clinton is raising questions of impropriety amid the ongoing FBI criminal probe into Hillary Clinton's email server and handling of classified information. To be sure, that meeting that happened last week was definitely a tip-off for me of what was coming down the pike, but I really didn't need that tip-off, and the reason that I didn't need that tip-off is because of what happened in May. I have to admit, until May, well, June, May, whenever it was, uh, I, had, I had some doubts about whether or not Hillary would be indicted. But when this happened, when President Obama came out and did what I'm going to play here, I knew for sure Hillary was not going to be indicted. Tens of millions of Americans have made their voices heard. Today, I just want to add mine. I the president made his Hillary formal Clinton declaration in a video released by the Clinton campaign. Look, I know how hard this job can be. That's why I know Hillary will be so good at it. In fact, I don't think there's ever been someone so qualified to hold this office. At the time of the Obama endorsement, I do not believe that everything was settled, but it was near settled. But there was a few details that had to be worked out. And this is the point of this video. And the point is this. When Loretta Lynch and Bill Clinton were meeting in secret, I needed to be face-to-face, -face, because this was a serious, serious deal that was about ready to unfold here. What they were really meeting about was about turf, was about territory, territory of the Democratic Party and territory of the, of the new political reality, assuming Hillary Clinton wins in November. And the deal is basically this, and this is all speculation on my part, but the deal is basically this, that if and when Hillary Clinton, Clinton wins the presidency, that Barack Obama's people, were, and really it's not Barack Obama's people, it's the people that are part of whatever this camp is that Obama is the puppet for. The, the Obama puppet camp versus the Clinton puppet camp. Behind them, there are, are real powers that are vying for more or less control because even amongst the 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 elitist of the elite they they don't act as one and uh, there are power plays and there's a power play going on here so there is a deal made first obama he he telegraphs to hillary okay you know i'm willing to play ball they're probably still negotiating but the, but the investigation is still going on and the investigation is kind of like a little uh, threat over Hillary. Listen, man, I know I endorsed you, but, you know, I could easily get out of that endorsement. It's like, yo, man, I didn't, I didn't know they were going to do that. So then Clinton and Lynch met. They had to do it face-to-face. -face. Lynch representing the Obama camp. Clinton, obviously Bill Clinton, representing the Clinton camp. And they shook hands. They uh, swapped spit, whatever the heck they got to do to, uh, you know, seal the deal. So that what you will see then, if Hillary Clinton wins, is you will see Obama people that will stay in key positions within the government system. And remember, the government system is just a coercive enterprise. So what we're really saying here is the Obama camp wants to m make sure, and when I say Obama camp, remember, we're talking about the power behind the Obama camp, whoever that is, the Obama camp wants to make sure that they get to hold on that they get to hold on to the big fat juiciness that is government. They get to get their deals. They get to get what, whatever it is that they want. They, they continue to get what they want. So it's a, it's a division of the empire. That is all that has happened. And now, in closing, I will say this. None of this matters to anyone fighting for liberty. What does matter is that you work here and now with the people around you in any way that you can to live liberty, to become self-reliant, self-sustaining, to help others do the same. And we need numbers of folks connecting with one another to enable all of us to better be more self-sustaining. Because this is 
a distraction. There's a, there's a very real conflict going on here amongst these powers, but you and I have absolutely no say in how this battle between these elites is going to turn out. The only thing that we have say in is we need to make it more difficult for them to apply their coercion against us. And we do it not by stopping them at the voting booth. We don't do it by, by engaging in all the political intrigues that they want us to engage in and get upset over this issue and that issue and sign this petition. We do it by building liberty right where we're at. So this has been Paul Gordon of State of Wake. And if you like this video, and I know you do because I've met me, and if you're just meeting me, obviously you love me. I mean, what the heck? Make sure that you like, comment, share this video, and please subscribe to our channel, State of Wake, on YouTube. You can look up State of Wake Show and you can find us on YouTube. Or you can click that subscribe button. Subscribe button. Do that.